Mars Insight has been quiet for quite a while now, but in a new report published, two astonishing findings question our understanding of tectonic activity and the formation of magnetic fields. Mars Insight was launched back in May 2018 and is designed to study the internals of Mars, the crust, the mantle and the core. The lander uses instruments to measure seismology, heat flow and precision tracking. Its main aim is to uncover how rocky bodies form and evolve by investigating the structure and composition of Mars. We already know that Mars has a very weak magnetic field that seems to have strong areas at some specific locations. So far, they have only been able to measure the magnetic field strength from satellites that orbit Mars. Mars InSight contains detailed instruments that can track the magnetic field in great detail. To their surprise, they found that the magnetic field where InSight had landed was 10 times stronger than they had expected and was changing rapidly. The data also suggested that the origin of the magnetic field was much closer and not further down into the mantle or core. It is believed that Mars's magnetic field used to be much stronger in the past, but that some catastrophic event caused it to shut down. The exact reason for this is unknown. Another interesting find was that the Sun has a large influence on this magnetic field. It is thought that the solar wind which carries its own magnetic field can have an influence on Mars's magnetic field due to the fact that it is much weaker than Earth's. Interestingly, there is strange data which points to fluctuations in the magnetic field around midnight. In the wording of the report, they refer to the fact that this might be caused by the solar wind and its magnetic field inducing currents, and that's electrical currents, and magnetic fields on the planet. And this is the first time I've seen this wording used by NASA, which is very interesting in itself. But this does raise an interesting question. In the EU model, we don't have an iron core which generates the magnetic field. Instead, it is believed that it is created as part of a global electric circuit. It is the movement of these charges which generates the magnetic field. And there is also some evidence to suggest that, in fact, Earth's magnetic field does not originate in the core, but instead is generated in the crust. If we examine Mars, we see that this local magnetic field is also coming from the crust. NASA suggests that this magnetic field is caused by a highly magnetized rock which has held on to this magnetic field for a very long time. If on the other hand the model is that the electric field is generated by the electric currents flowing in the global circuit, then we would expect to see this in the crust as well. It is interesting to see NASA discussing electrical currents causing magnetic anomalies. Could this be one small part of a much larger electrical circuit on Mars? If we examine Earth's global circuit, the assumption would have to be that this is driven externally via a larger circuit which is connected to our Sun. So why would Mars's field be so much weaker? If we examine which planets have a magnetic field, then only Venus and Mars do not have a proper magnetic field within our solar system. So how could this happen in an electric or plasma universe? Now obviously the concept of the thunderbolts of the gods paints a picture where Venus was ejected and moved to a new orbit and in the process caused massive damage to Mars and to a lesser extent to Earth. But why would this cause a change to the magnetic field and why would this newly formed Venus not simply slot into an orbit and connect into the same way as the other planets? Now if you were to reduce the incoming current to a planet, would this end up looking like Mars? If we examine Mercury, we see that the field is a hundred times weaker than Earth, but it has a similar shape to Earth's. I think this once more highlights the unusual composition of our solar system and raises big questions about how planets are connected to a solar circuit and what effect this has on the planets, like the rotation rates and the magnetic fields. So this, I think, is, is a topic that we need to come back to. Now the second finding that the data from the InSight uncovered was that they now believe that Mars is a seismically active planet. 
The first Mars quake was recorded by InSight's onboard sensor in April 2019, and since then it has detected over 450 of these events. Now these are much smaller than you would detect on Earth. Two of these quakes were large enough that they were able to trace it back to its source. When they analysed the data, it revealed that the quake came from an area known as the Cerebrus Fossae. These are a series of semi-parallel fissures, and they believe these are caused by a faulting formation due to a nearby volcano. In the Electric Universe model, these are actually caused by electrical arcing removing material and leaving no material at the bottom. Now the same is true of the volcano, this is also believed to be an arcing event in the Electric Universe model. But this does raise an interesting question. On Earth we see tectonic activity because of the plate movements. And there are clear boundaries for these plates. We also see areas of activity and we see similar structures called fault lines, but they tend to connect together to these larger plates. And here when we examine the one on Mars, it seems to be just two parallel lines. Now it could equally be argued that these ones that we see on Earth are not fault lines, but again evidence of massive arcing events. The question then becomes why are we seeing seismic activity from this area on Mars? Does the arcing event occur here because there is already an underlying current present? The current then continues afterwards and causes occasional shifts in the rock creating tremors. Now one idea that does keep popping back into my head is back to Eugene's ultra deep biosphere. Here we have evidence of two fault lines or two cracks into the surface or into the subsurface of the crust. So does this allow the microbes access into the deeper layers of the crust? And then do these then cause the occasional earthquakes? There are many questions that these two reports raise, and I would like to start looking at the concepts of electrical geology and how this could shape a planet and how this connects to a global electric circuit. I hope you've enjoyed this look at some of the latest data from Mars. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. And once again, a massive thank you to all my Patreon supporters. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.